following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this, this is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. First down. Hand on Elliott, plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. Here are Mickey Spagnola, Brian Broaddus, Rob Phillips, and Bill Jones. Well, at least Tiger won yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Talking Cowboys on the day after a trip to Seattle, which uh, was a pleasurable experience for all who made the trip, I understand, except for three hours on Sunday afternoon. We're here to break it all down and uh, kick off Lions Week as quickly as possible here on Talking Cowboys. <laughs> Bill Jones with Mickey Spagnola, Brian Broaddus, and Rob Phillips. How was your weekend? Three hours and three minutes. Is that what it was? Yes. For those who were counting, three hours and three minutes of uh, misery. And now with a one and two record, the Cowboys head home, get back to work and uh, try to figure out what went wrong. And that's what we will do for the next hour. We invite your phone calls as well. 888-855-2297. Rob, you made the trip to Seattle. You have a good weekend. I I mean, the Pacific Northwest, it's beautiful up there. It's great. Took in a college football game. Oh, you went to the uh, Washington Arizona enjoy, State. Game. Yeah, enjoyed that. That was great. Um, love it up there. Those three hours, not good. <laughs> not good. I mean, some good things, uh, but continuations of problems that we saw in Week One that are really hurting this team, especially offensively. And Brian Brados was holding down the fort here at the Star, and uh, you enjoyed his fine work pre and post game. And Thank you. Uh, now we hear from Brian Broaddus, his first take on what happened. Yeah, I just think there's, like Rob said, there's a lot of the same things that happened to this team. I've never seen an offense that does more to get in its own way as far as they, they cannot overcome bad things that happen to them. You know, and it's whether it's a down and distance situation, it's a, an awareness situation, it's a mistake of not blocking a guy, it's a drop pass. Th- this offense is just not good enough to overcome bad things that happen to them. And there's there's teams that take sacks, there's teams that fumble, there's teams that take that have interceptions. But when you watch this, it's not just the play calling, but there's so many things involved when you watch this team and the problems that they have. You know, Mickey talks about the protection. Uh, That's a problem. The quarterback not seeing the field. The receiver's not uh, catching the ball. There's just so many things that when they do get a little bit of momentum, then something happens to them. They they just – the negative plays are are just – are are too much – you know, for this offense to even overcome. They're challenged to move the football because of mistakes that they make. And because they're challenged to move the football, it's difficult to overcome mental mistakes that occur. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they had far too many of those. Uh, you know, Brian mentioned it. You have three or four drop passes. Yeah. Two of them end up being intercepted. Uh, you run the ball into the red zone, and then you fumble. Yeah. Longest play of the day. Uh you throw a touchdown pass, but for some reason, the running back didn't see the four-foot-wide white stripe at the end on the sideline and stepped out of pounds previously. It's, it's, it's just hard to keep overcoming those things. Yeah. And then you get yourself in situations where Seattle, all they got to do is pin their ears back and come at you. You get a team that only had three sacks in two games get five, five, and hit your quarterback 10 times. So if we add it up in the two losses, that's 11 sacks and 20 quarterback hits. It's hard to play football that way. Yeah. And, you, and you can't keep – and, it, and you know, don't sit there and just say, well, Joe Looney's playing center or Connor Williams is the left guard. He's a rookie. It was across the board. Yeah. Across the whole five. Frank Clark had himself a day yesterday. They moved Frank Clark around yesterday, yeah. which was really smart on their right. part because they felt like that really that Lyle Collins is not good enough as a right tackle uh, to handle him one-on-one. So the smart thing is take him away from a guy you feel like, well, he's not going to win every battle against Tyron Smith, but move him over to the other side. And, you know, he he made plays over there. I mean, that's what that, – that's – you know, it, it was very, very clear – 
that they had a plan of how they wanted to attack the Cowboys. And offensively for the Seattle Seahawks, their plan was very clear. They were comfortable running the ball for three yards a carry because they saw how inept the Dallas offense was. Right. The, the Dallas offense never forced Seattle to change their game plan. One team was desperate and committed. The other team was just desperate and confused. And that's why that penalty at the end of the first half was so critical in this game yeah. when when you get behind two scores against right. a team that realizes that it can just run the football because it's not being pressed by right. the other team's offense. Yeah. It was almost like they were running the ball to eat clock. Because they certainly, they, they as knew, Brian said, yeah. two point nine yards. Same, yeah. carry. same thing yeah. Carolina did in the first week no, of the season. Yeah. When there's, there's, no there's, biggie. There, there mm -hmm. was no reason for them to get out of any of their mode. I mean, it, it was almost like, uh, you know, if you look at the numbers of the game, and again, I, I don't always do this this way, but if a quarterback is sixteen of twenty six for one ninety two, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And they wins the game. That's kind of Dak Prescott like in 2016. And one of one of them was a hu one huge play, 52 yards yeah, for a touchdown. Exactly. So you take that away, and it's yeah, his numbers on the flip aren't side. Big. On the flip side, the losing quarterback was 19 to 34 for 168, one touchdown and two interceptions. Three turnovers were huge in this game. Mickey talked about yeah. it. Is you have the you have the Earl Thomas, uh, you know, first one off the ground basically. Great job of him being in position. Michael Gallup has got to catch that football. See that that drive to me is symptomatic of the whole thing we talked about. You uh, people are going to question the play calling. Okay, here's a drive, second drive of the game. They had a good design on first down. They fake a reverse to Tavon. Hand off to Zeke, seven yards, good position. Then yeah. they go end around to Tavon. Okay, they're trying to spread yeah. things out, yeah. do some trying different to things. Open up things inside, yeah. Gallup has to make that catch on first and ten. And it and hey, Earl Thomas, terrific awareness to be able to, you know, scoop that off his foot. Reactionary player. Yeah, amazing. But, but see, yeah, you're right, Rob. It's, but but your to your point, it's it was a lot of different things. You know, it was yeah. drops, it was it the Mickey's right, the protection. It's not the same offensive line that we saw you two know years what? ago. And it's, it's not, not just the offensive linemen, the tight ends. Zeke did it again. He goes to cut a guy, and the guy jumps over yeah. him and blasts your quarterback. Yeah. Stand up and hit him in the chest. Yeah. How many more times has that got to happen? It affected the way that Dak threw the ball to the outside. They had Hearns open on the outside, and, and Zeke goes low, and now the guy's up in, in Dak's face. And, you know, if you hit him square, you have a chance. And, you know, I, I just go back to the, the quarterback has been struggling with some of his visual, some of the reads. But what he does on the slant to uh, on the slant that Gallup drops, he's looking away to set to give Gallup the chance to you know so the safeties will stay on one side of the field. So Prescott's doing exactly what he has to do to get Gallup open. And he puts the ball right where Gallup needs to catch it. And, and you know, you, you, everybody knows the result. But here's, here's a play call. Here is a execution on the quarterback's behalf to help you. But the finish is horrendous. Right. So, okay, how are you? You, you want to know why this offense is not any good? Play call, execution, finish. None of them seem to work for this football team offensively right now. You know, Mickey brought it up. Ezekiel running out of bounds. And Garrett says, well, he's a very aware player. I understand. I mean, he gets wide. He gets wide. He gets wide. He keeps getting wide. And then he's going to burst to try and make the turn up the field. But Dak but is coming to him. he was not forced out of bounds. Yeah, on Dak that play. is coming no, to him. And yep. now it's like, and once again, what happens? Play breaks down. Quarterback figures it out. Athletically gets to the outside. Okay, here we go. Play call. Uh, execution finish the finish is your is your running back who you who you trust to to win games for you steps out of bounds is it a mistake yeah is it a mental mistake it's an awareness mistake he said and, it i had terrible awareness on that play and the worst he, he, part he didn't know where he was yeah he and the worst part was. is it's it's it nullifies the play yeah but it's not a penalty where you get the down over no it's, it's a just, loss of it down. doesn't loss count of, yeah. yeah now you're forced and to it's kick like, a field now goal you got to kick a field goal yeah. and you can't be kicking field goals and, and then the other problem in what what's been going on and it goes back to what I wrote on Friday this defense had to continue playing well to buy the offense time and they have two busted coverages uh, which they just can't afford and then the Randy Gregory brain fart at the end of the half. Although having watched warmups, 
Janikowski would have blasted a 62-yard <laughs> yeah, field goal. But st- this is where you also you take a chance. Right. You know, you're giving him 15 yards. You're saying, okay, you're a Hall of Fame kicker, and you probably are going to make a 70-yard field goal or whatever. This mm-hmm. guy, he, he's you know, he's, he's rare. He's mm-hmm. he's like that guy, the cornerback from the Redskins that played for 40 years. You know, that Daryl Green. Daryl yeah. Green. He, yeah. These guys that you look at him and you go. No way, and he, and it's going to be. But don't he, judge his leg leg yeah. strength by his shape. But, the, but but that's what I'm saying. Don't give him 15 yard, yeah. extra yeah, yards no. because I mean, he makes that he then. makes that every single time. Mm-hmm. It was so, a momentum play too for Seattle, and they get the ball smart start play to by happen. Seattle. Yeah. Joey Hunt, the Joey Hunt. lineman, the yeah. TCU Horn Frog. It was a smart play. That was the only way they were going to get 15 yards on that p- particular play. Yeah. Bait him into. Doing something, and yep. they did it. Yeah, but that just shows you. You know, we talk about it—the discipline to. That's you know, right. we talk you about be. discipline. You're going to have to play, but Seattle—they played. Seattle played exactly how they wanted to play yesterday. They played exactly how they want to play, and they football. protected the quarterback. They did a better yeah. job of that. They'd given and up a dozen sacks in their two losses, well, but and there the was Cowboys no, get two. You gave them no reason. You 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 know you didn't put them in situations. The guy went back to 26 times. You know, you didn't put him in a situation where he had to throw the ball 38, 40 times. You're so right, though. I, I mean, Carson gets 32 carries in this game yeah. for only 102 yards, by What's, the way. But Brian Schottenheimer did the smart thing. He, This is what you, I always talk about. Know the condition of your team. Mm-hmm. He knew Dallas offensively was not going to do anything. He saw that. And so it's real easy for, for, uh, for Pete Carroll to click over and say, run it here. Run it. Mm-hmm. Run it again, and just keep doing that. And what happened? What did he do? He had all, he had three new starters inside in the interior offensive line. Right. He not only did Schottenheimer protect his offense, he protected his excuse me his offensive line. He protected his quarterback as well. Especially when Dallas has the length of the field to drive offensively. I mean, and, and which is why that roughing the passer penalty on Tyrone Crawford on the third offensive play for Seattle was sure. critical in the first sure. quarter of that game. Because, and now Dallas needs to get off the field after, to overcome that adversity and get them off the field. But if they're punting on that after that third down play, if they don't throw the flag on that, Cowboys are getting the ball at the 40, their own 40 yard line instead of they wound up getting it at their own 15 yard line. There was a time where this team could be able to drive the exactly. field and they right. don't do that anymore. It's, right. it, Two another, years ago, they could do that. Yeah, that's right. Here's another example first drive of the third quarter, get a holding penalty on the return or punt return. Then Rico gets a false start, and all of a sudden, you're at second and 15 at your own six. Yeah. And after Zeke gets stopped for no gain, Tyron gives up a sack. I mean, it's it, it, when, it, when an offense struggles this much. It's always a lot of different things, well, except they, that Atlanta game last year. Didn't they year. have a situation where they had uh, Rico jumped off sides? Yes. Is yes. that the play? And they the completed, start, they completed a pass. Thompson got a 10-yard gain. Thompson got a 10-yard gain. Okay, so now you're thinking if it's first and 10 or second 10, okay, they've got the, they've got the yard. They've got it. they got a first down with the 10-yard pass. But they come up five yards short. Had a you third know, and five. They have a third and five. Now they're having to throw the football, right. and they get the sack. And, like, and Clark just, just gets typical. around Tyron. This is just – I wrote about that last night. This is just typical of what this offense is right now. It can't It can't help itself. There's no – you know, the, the one energy plays that it – the energy plays that it has is generally when they get the ball to number 10. Mm-hmm. That's the one guy that's got some juice. That second drive where yeah, they kind of got going a little get bit. The, they get the jet sweep for 18 yards. Boom, everybody's blocking up front. I mean, yep. he gives you a little juice. And there's no other juice or spark that's happening with this team offensively. And the, it shows you how weird the game was. Zeke ran the ball very well. I mean, 7.9 yards a pop. But he also just hurts you so bad in the game. You know, that's the irony of it was he – I mean, he admitted it. He thought – well, he thought they'd cost him the game. I wouldn't go that far. But they left maybe at least a touchdown, maybe 10 points on the board right there with a couple of mistakes. Not to mention a third down that he might have completed on third and nine. Yeah, he might have – I, I, I went back and Wagner was, yeah. in, was there. No, but it was, it was uh, Kendricks. Was it Kendricks? Kendricks. And, I mean, he was on the upfield hip. And it's going to be – if you the ball's out in front, and if he catches it – he breaks that tackle. It's an easy first. But if he if Kendricks makes that tackle, which is probably what's going to happen because this offense can't get a break, you know, it's going to be four yards short. But you, I'll take my chances throwing the ball to Ezekiel Elliott on the move. But what happens? He had the crazy Tony Dorsett hands. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And he's usually like really good. Yeah. And, we, and everybody's, as as everybody's like, get him involved in the passing game. Get him involved in the passing game. Okay, you're trying to get him involved in the passing game. You know, you're trying. And that happens. Now you're like, but does that mean you stop trying to get him involved? No. But, gosh, it just makes you think like, okay, who else can I throw it to? If my best player's not making plays, who is going to make plays? Mm-hmm. Who is? That's Jeff Swain with five catches. And a lot of that was, hey, we got to get the ball out quick. Let's get it up first read. Let's go to Swain. Let's try to get in a manageable situation here on third down. And Seattle did. Which yeah. is the way to get into a rhythm. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. You know, Cole Beasley was interesting after the game. He's talking about communication issues that, uh, that they're thought, having. Yeah, that, well, I mean, communications as far as not hearing on yeah, the outside? Yeah, or No, no. Uh, I think that the problems that they're having offensively are related to communication issues. And I don't know. I, I just heard the sound bite. I didn't hear the full context of it. I didn't but hear I'm, that. I'm wondering – where he's going? I wonder with if he's that. going crowd because we didn't. No, I, I didn't, no, I don't he didn't mean crowd didn't noise. Mean crowd he meant that everybody not on the same page, page as far as the passing execution game goes. In the passing well, game. that's a terrible indictment of what's going on then in those meetings. If that's the case, and I don't know if don't, that's if that's what well, he means. Yeah. That's a terrible indictment. Right At least there. they didn't try to be twelve men on the field. Twice. <laughs> Twice. Twice. Yeah. Yeah. They, they carried the 12, 12, 12 seriously, this, didn't you get, they? this, again, goes back to the <laughs> offense. You get a break. It's third and six. You get 12 men on the field. Now you're third and one. I'll take Ezekiel at running the ball for third and one every time, Chuck, for 200, please. And they got, and they <laughs> got know? stuff. And, no, they don't block Bobby Wagner. Mm-hmm. How Didn't do you even not touch block, him. How do you not block their best player? See, that's what I'm saying. And it looked like to me that maybe that once again, you know, and I'm not pointing the finger here, but I'm just looking at scheme. That they, everybody's down blocking, but Lyle Collins, and they're trying to get the they're trying to get Jeff Swaim around the corner to maybe trap or log that guy in. Prescott could have pulled the ball and then gone forward for a yard, you know, if he wanted to. Earl Thomas was sitting there, but they there was some confusion on the outside between Swaim and Hearns. What was going on over there? Mm-hmm. And but you don't block Bobby Wagner, and he runs through for a, no gain. Oh, okay, I thought about you in that play. I was like, Mike mm-hmm. linebacker. Right, got to identify him because he he's was... the one guy that can make the tackle yeah. at the point of attack. Right, mm-hmm. and, that, and, and so you're saying, okay, it's how many times in third and one? Hand it to Zeke, first down. How, Should be automatic. Zeke, first down. How many times? Yep. Now this team can't even block the damn Mike linebacker to get a first down, and they catch a break on a 12 men on the field. Right. Mm-hmm. Not third and six. It's third and one. All right, we're just getting started here on Talking Cowboys. We're going to take your phone calls at 888-855-2297. And perhaps for the last time this season when we come back, we will mention the name Earl Thomas when Talking Cowboys continues. Or maybe not. It can be hard to find the right resource for learning about important financial matters. You search how to build savings, you end up reading about the one weird ingredient from supermarkets that can make you taller. That's why Bank of America built BetterMoneyHabits.com, a safe little corner of the internet for answering your financial questions. Full of simple videos and tips, Better Money Habits can show you how to make the most of your money without resorting to random searches that always seem to lead to unbelievable photos of childhood stars grown up. To learn more, visit BetterMoneyHabits.com. I definitely have an Instagram foodie thing, but the low-light camera on my new Samsung Galaxy S9 from AT&T is getting me a whole new world of likes and shares. Baskets of bread by candlelight, colorful fruit plates in full sun, even a dimly lit Cobb salad was recently hailed as a masterpiece. Come in now and ask how to get half off the new Samsung Galaxy S9 from AT&T. AT&T, more for your thing. That's our thing. Limited time only. See store for details or att.com slash Samsung 50. The dual aperture supports F15 mode and F24 mode. Dual aperture is installed on the rear camera. Oh, I am craving a Dr. Pepper. I got some soda. I asked not for soda. I asked for ice cold, craveable Dr. Pepper. Its flavor is more one of a kind than a foretold sloth with a thirst for speed. <laughs> so stop settling for soda and start demanding Dr. Pepper. I love sloths. When you crave a Dr. Pepper, nothing else will do. Grab an ice cold 20 ounce Dr. Pepper today. Dr. Pepper, the one you crave. To work this big land, you need equipment with values rooted as deep in Texas soil as you are. Like John Deere compact tractors with a six-year powertrain warranty and big features that help you work less so you have more time to do what you love. John Deere was first in the Texas fields and we're proud to be on the field as the official ag and turf equipment of the Dallas Cowboys. Find Texas sized deals at myjohndeerdealer.com slash football. Terms, conditions, exclusions, and warranty limitations apply. See dealer for details. 
back to Talking Cowboys. Adjust your cleats, adjust your pads, even adjust your helmet. But seriously, don't adjust your underwear because once it's been seen, it cannot be unseen. Tommy John has a contour pouch and moisture wicking fabric to keep you cool and dry on the field or in the stands, Brian. Tommy John, no adjustment needed. Shop exclusive Cowboys underwear at TommyJohn.com forward slash Cowboys for 20% off your first order, Bill. Thank you, and I'm hoping that mine get washed sometime early this week just so I can for, be just, back in them. Just do it for everybody. Cabo, Texas. Is that how you say it? Cabo, Texas is That's coming to AT&T Stadium May 10th through the 12th, 2019. 2019 will be here before you know it. This is not your typical <laughs> festival. Cabo, Texas offers an adult escape uniquely curated to appeal to all five of your senses with world-class music, hilarious comedy, incredible cuisine, craft libations, inspiring contemporary art, and personal indulgences. Personal I got, indulgences. <laughs> I got another paragraph to read here. Oh, sorry. You can expect <laughs> the inaugural Cabo Texas music lineup to feature a variety of chart-topping hits, legendary rockers, bucket list performers, and new acts you'll be excited to discover. Get your early bird passes now at KaboTexas.com. That is spelled K-A-A-B-O-O Texas.com. Let me just say something real quick on that. I know we got a football team to figure out, but I have a friend that went to that in Del Mar and oh, really? had a blast. So hey, look into it. Check is that it out. How you say what it? Kaboo? Kaboo. What, what Kaboo. day? What day is it? May 10th Two through 12th. So that's five. That's after the draft. Eight, that's yeah, eight we, months away. Yeah, we right? got it. We got it. We'll have a new draft class. Yeah, but you got to get the early bird passes now. Out, Nick, yeah. At Kaboom, how do you Texas. make the, how do you how do you make plans for eight months ahead? Well, you know, I that do that all the time, Mickey. Remember, you do? We, we, yeah, when we go like on road trips, I tell guys about we need to eat at this Manny Steakhouse yes. in Minneapolis. Yeah, but that's Brian different. makes you're reservations not, from make, his desk, I, I but make, you're yeah. not paying for. it. You ever bought like, tickets to a concert? You're like, oh, uh, I have never done it. Chubby Checker is going to be there. Chubby Checker. Chubby Checker. <laughs> this this fits really perfectly into Brian Brada's schedule because it's basically the week after the draft. Yeah, and absolutely. So you're you're so busy leading through the draft. You know what? If then... there's some bucket list performers, if they could get like the Beatles hey. to come back together, <laughs> the and Beatles. I'd like to see Led Zeppelin <laughs> perform. You know, I mean, they, they got some bucket list people. I'm all in. Uh-huh. All right, legendary rockers. When do we find out yeah. who the legendary rockers are? But it's supposed to be diverse. Charlotte said Chubby it, Checker. It's enough to. I don't know if Chubby will be there, but if you got. Enough diversity to take her mom, Jean Jones, or her 17-year-old son. So, you know, we'll find out the act soon. But so there'll be somebody them. even for you, Mick. That's right. Three Dog there'll, Night. There'll be a I don't Billy Joel. Hey, don't be a, talking uh, about Three Dog Night. <laughs> yeah, oh, you like to do? Yes. Okay. All right. I'd love do I want to go to night. New Orleans for the Jazz Festival or Kaboo down Mickey, the road? Mickey, you need to go to this one, okay? okay. That's what we need to do. All right. Oh, just, <laughs> yeah, company's sake. So get <laughs> your <laughs> early bird passes at KaboomTexas.com. We're down com. one man tomorrow on our show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, no rookie mini camp that week, right? Mickey, oh, uh, Mr. Jones needs to see you. <laughs> All right, 888-855-2297, the number to call to join us here on Talking Cowboys. How about we start this segment off with a phone call from Palmer in Georgia. Palmer, you're up on Talking Cowboys. All right, gentlemen, I've got a theory on this whole quarterback thing. Okay. Uh, Tony, Tony Romo's last year, the play clock, all, he always snapped the ball with one or two seconds left. And there were a lot of people crying, why aren't they running the ball, especially in the red zone? Well, I think everyone's conclusion was that Tony was checking out of run plays into throwing plays. I think it's time to put the handcuffs back on Dak. Dak's first year, the ball was always snapped with 10 or more seconds left on the play clock. He was actually running the play that was called. I think, that if, I think if he ran every play that was called yesterday, I think it would have at least looked a little bit better. I just think it's time to put him back in kindergarten and just take, put the handcuffs back on. That's my theory. Hell, I don't even know if that would work. Thanks for all you do, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Palmer. Sorry, I was confused. He doesn't want Dak to have the ability to check to out, to check plays. The line of scrimmage. He's, he feels like, and, and, and if you talk to some NFL people around the league about that, the first year that, and, and, there are coaches that will say it's kind of nice to have a rookie quarterback, 
to, so because a rookie quarterback never questions your call. A rookie quarterback just runs the play, whatever you. And there's some guys around the league with veteran quarterbacks, you know, just really good example, but he's really good at it is the guy down in New Orleans, you know, and he's really good at getting in and out of plays. And, but there's something too. Play callers kind of like a guy that will say, okay, I'm not going to question what you're going to call. I mean, I'm not going to, the quarterback, it's not going to question what I'm going to call. I'm going to call this play and we're going to see if we can execute it. But I, I, I don't know if necessarily if it's Dak changing plays at the line. It may not be that every time. I don't he, think I mean, so every time. But, yeah. I mean, he, he threw out a theory, yeah. and we'll need to see that. No, but. that's uh, it's a thought, and we did talk about that in the press box. It's like, all right, you, this is down to one second, and they know exactly when the ball is going to be. It helps them get off, this, off the ball. Um, there is something, too. I, I had some people on Twitter, and, and, and you guys watch the game, too. Are they tipping their snap count, though, with a touch from Zach Martin, a head turn from Joe Looney, and then the snap? Are, 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 are guys good enough on the defensive line to kind of go into a game and say, okay, when I see Joe Looney turn, I'm going? You know, I, I'm just Could asking be. this question. Frank Clark, I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just asking. Yesterday. Yeah, because he jumped the count one time, against, one time. against Tyron Smith. And Not then, the sack, but one time before that. Right. And Tyron Smith, just being the athlete that he is, was able to get enough of him to allow Prescott to step up in the pocket a little bit. But I wonder if, if you want to tell me – that maybe that Dak needs to play with the, the snap count a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'll buy into that because a there's bit. a there was several times where I saw him frantically going to the hey, line clap, of scrimmage clap, 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 clap. and yeah. trying to yeah. and then, and then yeah. I looked up and it's like well wait a minute there's yeah. 14 seconds left why yeah. what what's the hurry yeah. you know slow down uh, I don't but see what happens it's not like he's going up to the line of scrimmage when he changes the call and he has this roller decks of plays, when they give him that play, they've practiced, okay, if you don't like this look, then check to this. It's not like he's just going through his mind and going, well, let me try this. That yeah. stuff's all pre-planned. Now, is he is he making the wrong decision getting out of a run to throw the ball or getting out of a throw to run the ball? That's m maybe what's going on, but... Uh, I don't know. In that environment, I'm not checking a lot of plays. That's right? just me. I'm not going in with the idea of like, okay, I'm going to sit here and just go through while my 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 tackles can't hear, my receivers can't hear, I mean, my backs can't hear. I'm not going in there with the idea of doing that. So I, I, I understand his question, but I, I think to Mickey's point is it's not every single down – that you're seeing him do this. You know, I, I just don't. Can I throw out one more thing offensively that surprised me? You guys surprised at the lack of zone read looks in the game? As I went back and watched it this morning, the first one I saw was 11.53 left to go in the game. Oh, they the what? one where he pulled it? That, that one where he had a couple of them where they actually Zeke's one of Zeke's seven yard runs yeah was a was a, 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 a was a read was option RPO? yeah okay. and he and he and he like I said on the third and one on the first series he could have pulled the ball and and dove for the first down on that one instead he trusted that Zeke could okay. somehow get past Bobby Wagner I just didn't notice much of it in I, the I'm game just, I'm just, well, compared I'm, to last no game I'm 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 almost to half you know we got the film late and I was in this morning after parent teacher conferences and I I've, I've noticed though that it not as prevalent so far as what it was last week and it was pretty effective now maybe that can they can see things like at the line of scrimmage and say ah, this is not a good situation well, they're scheming you, up for you it. all of a sudden you have a safety walking down they had the safety walking down the other day you they know they played a lot of single safety high they did. with yeah. earl by himself yeah. but they still ran for 167 yards they did that was not a problem yesterday they averaged 8 yards a carry Running the ball wasn't the problem. Okay, I, I made the point earlier. Was one coordinator committed and the other one not? And I and I'm not trying to put the. Again, it sounds like I'm trying to pl place the sole blame of this on Linehan. And I, I guarantee you, I mean, I'm sorry, Joe and Flower Mound and Vic and Ventura. I'm not trying to offend you here as a fan, but I don't know if you necessarily. And I'm I'm not going to defend Linehan, but I'm I'm saying here and I'm asking you guys. Did he were they not as committed as say Seattle was? Well and, and is there a time should we be more committed now if this offensive line is not elite? He threw he threw 30, 34 passes. Yes. Okay. 
two were in a miserably failed two-minute drill at the end of the first half. Right. Ten came after they were two scores down with five minutes left in the game. Last couple so drives. So 12 yeah. of his passes came in either two-minute drill or desperation with five minutes to go when you're down 24 uh, 13. So 12 of the 34 attempts happened in that situation. Otherwise, you had thrown 22 passes and you ran it 16 times. So those numbers get skewed because of the situation. Okay. But he, but he, he had good enough balance in for you guys. And is that what is is that what you're trying? I'm to just come? saying, major half a, a third of his passes came when they were in situations where, where he they needed to throw the ball. I think I think it was very similar. Both teams' commitment to the run. Myself. Okay. When you look at Chris Carson, he had ten carries in the fourth quarter after they were up twenty-four to six. Mm-hmm. Ten, ten of his ten 32. of his thirty-two, and so he had twenty-two carries through three quarters of the game. Yeah, and Zeke wound up with 16 carries for 127, whatever. Yeah. Yep, and I just think it was very similar uh, as far as their commitment to the run. And I think if the Cowboys led 24 to six, Zeke would have had 30 carries. Zeke would have run the ball for 32 times. Yeah, exactly. And he I might mean, have what had, happened he last had, week when they right. had the lead, right? right. After they got it's up, kind of, it's kind of the same principle with the with what's talking about the Dallas defense. All right, I think some of those numbers are hollow as far as the Dallas defense. I'm I'm keeping uh, I'm tapping the brakes on how great this defense is based on how poorly this Cowboys offense has been so far because the other teams have not in Carolina and Seattle have not had to press the issue on offense. And so let's let's wait and see what happens. Yeah, this so offense is a hand, clearly a handicap yeah. for the defense. Right. And not not just putting them out there a bunch, but just the fact that they score no no points. There's there's very little margin for error, as Mickey said, a bust or two, and that that blows the game wide open, really, because now you're two scores down. As Bill said, that's a that's a huge lead to overcome the way this offense is playing. Also, tell me how much time Sean Lee's going to miss now. And you know, anytime you've got recurring hamstring problems, the second time you around, just need it's to a while. Shut him down for a month and yeah. see what happens. Now, or... Leighton, Leighton Van Der Esch looked like he played pretty well in this game. Uh, but we all know what Sean does in terms of communication standpoint and getting guys in the right spot and all that. So well, I don't know if he would have helped the safeties out. Yeah. Speaking now, of, of sudden, safeties. Now all of a sudden you can't play without Jeff Heath on the field. Speaking of safeties, how big of a difference was the guy for Seattle yesterday? Uh, yeah, I don't think you could write a better script than what uh, unfolded with Earl and all the stuff around it yesterday. And Mickey, I know what Mickey's gonna say. Well, he's just you know, he's a safety. He, he caught a couple. <laughs> he caught a couple balls that were just right there for him. But he hasn't. That's the thing about him. He has a knack for just being around the football and being in the right spot. And yeah, that's a credit and, to him. and 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 have Michael Gallup drop a pass. Right, but he was there to make the play. How many times have we seen the Cowboys secondary like almost be there? You know. He's a heck of a player, man. You got to give it to him. <laughs> I've never seen a guy so fortunate in my life. Okay. okay. How many times did the second one get tipped before it landed in his hands? Twice? It's a heck of a play by Bobby Wagner to even make it a contested play. And then Darwin yeah, right. tries to bat it down like he's playing I think volleyball. he was actually trying to bring it in. At first, Who, I thought he Jarwin? was batting it down yeah. to, get it, to keep it from being he intercepted. Tried to catch it. But on, on, upon further review, I think he was flailing at it, trying to bring it in. And. Um, you have to put yourself in position to make those plays. That's right. And that's where this guy instinctually is one of the best to ever play mm-hmm. because he knows exactly yeah. where he needs to be. It might not always, uh, you know, uh, with him, uh, it, he is a difference maker. And yep. I, I'm sorry, Mickey, I, I'll disagree with you all day. Oh, the- I think he's a good player, but it wasn't <laughs> like he was so great yesterday. Did no, he? he's he a great, the he's a great player. And picked off a, co- two a, a safety can make a difference in a football game. And a safety yesterday made a difference in a football well, game. Well, the Cowboys' safeties made a difference, too. They did. They cost them to lose. They are asking for it, man. <laughs> that bow, though, by Thomas. Come yeah. on. Yeah. That yeah. was a well-spent 15 yards. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Much better than right. Randy Gregory's. All right. We're going to put this to bed after today because now 
I mean, Seattle's one and two. Cowboys are one and two. I mean, why is Seattle going to give Thomas, up? Earl Thomas, he's going to not practice for three days a week. So That's just right. get ready for That's that. That's right. Yeah. As, long, <laughs> as long as he's in Seattle, yeah. he's not going to practice on Wednesday and Thursday That's and right. maybe on Friday. Did right. you he's see gonna, his comments after the game? He basically said, yeah. Basically if, said, I'm protecting myself. I'm protecting my own investment. So and if it, they won't do it, I will. Yeah. So is it our understanding that at the draft, a second round pick could have got him? 50, yes. Number 50. Yeah. yeah, and Dallas came back with a good offer for a second-round pick and just uh, recently here before mm-hmm. Earl decided to report back. The problem you're running into now is John Snyder believes that, and he made an in-season trade for Dwayne Brown, the the, the right. tackle. And it was after they played Houston. And Exactly right. And it was John gave up a player, and he gave up a two yep. in this draft, this coming-up draft, and a five, five in last year's draft. Yeah. And he thinks that Dwayne Brown – uh, thinks that Earl Thomas is a better player than Dwayne Brown. I would agree with that. If that's the case, nobody's going to give him anything for this, unless he unless he wants to get unless. But he, the point is, if you wanted to get Earl Thomas, you the time to, to get him was draft night uh, when the, yeah. you could get him for a second. And right. would you have yeah. would you have had time then to negotiate a long term deal? Draft night. Draft night. Oh yeah, yeah. On the clock. See, this is this is where I to me this is where yeah. if you have a player that wants to be there, mm-hmm. he's not going to hold you up. I just don't. He'll hold you up if it's somewhere. If John Snyder trades him to, say, he trades him to Tampa or Atlanta or one of these other places, he's going to hold you. Hold. He's going to hold. Up he's going to hold you up. Be there. He's going to hold you up. But the fact that he has been adamant that he wants to be here. And John Snyder doesn't owe him anything. John can take the best offer he gets from anybody. He can so, also be very stubborn. Yeah, so I, I guess I, my, I, had, I had people in Green Bay ask me, they go, you guys really offer a two for this guy? All right. Like, so, my, yeah. so my question as it relates to yesterday, and I'm dropping this after, after this segment, mm-hmm. okay? Because I, don't, I think it's all a moot point now. If Earl Thomas is playing for Dallas yesterday instead of for Seattle, how does that change the game? Well, he doesn't get two interceptions for Seattle, mm-hmm. and maybe his maybe his backup there doesn't make those plays. I, I think to me, this is I think this is where the game changes because we all had confidence. Okay, I shouldn't say it, we all. I had confidence in the Dallas safeties. I felt like that Heath and Frazier deserve my respect. They after two weeks, they deserve my respect. Does Earl Thomas make a difference when? You know, is he back there and, and all of a sudden he sees a route develop on the outside or he knows the down and distance and he says, oh, this is where they're going to go. Maybe he maybe he makes a play on that back end over there instead of them trying to s- disguise coverages and all of a sudden, you know, you get Frazier caught up short. Forty The 52-yard play? Yeah. 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 And maybe if he's on the field, you know, Chito maybe Uzi Brian Schottenheimer's whole yeah, yeah. strategy changes if yeah. they've got a veteran safety. You, you back have there. a guy that has an understanding of how to, and, and it goes back to positioning. How do you position yourself in order to make plays? He did it in week one against Denver. They run a vertical route up the seam, and what does he do? He reads it all the way, cuts in front of it, gets an interception. Mm. That's what this guy does. That's the type of player he is. I don't know how you not want a guy like that, but that's the way it goes. All right, we continue on Talking Cowboys. Take more of your phone calls in just a moment. Cowboys fans know that the second best of anything simply won't cut it, and your skincare should be no different. A longtime locker room favorite of the players and the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Dallas based Jack Black, is the number one best selling men's skincare brand in the country because we make products that help guys look, smell, and feel better. Visit getjackblack.com slash cowboys to get $10 off your first order of $50 or more. Jack Black, look good, smell good, feel good. Official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, alumni, and cheerleaders. That's not all, though. You'll get to talk X's and O's with Senior Director of Player Personnel Will McClay and, of course, with yours truly, me, Brian Broaddus. You can trust the official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and with us, you'll travel like a pro. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. 
Stetson hats are still American made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. What does it mean to be a Dallas Cowboys fan? It means you've got the passion and the heart to do your part supporting the boys no matter what. That's why when the game's on the line, you're on your feet, whether you're at home or in the stands. Actually, you're more than a fan. You are a member of Cowboys Nation, and so is AT&T, doing their part to keep you connected to America's team all season long. AT&T is a proud member of Cowboys Nation. Back to Talking Cowboys. Want to use what the pros use? Or myself, Rob. We got Bill. Yes. Brian I using it. it. Jack Black is the official I've been men's using it. skin care brand of Just the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, Get right. your Jack Black Playmaker. <laughs> For JB Bays, plus a full size lip balm for just 10 bucks. And guess what? The shipping is free at getjackblack.com. Use code Cowboys. <laughs> My daughter, Jordan, she's about two weeks behind on these podcasts. Yeah. I mean, these millennials, they listen to podcasts all the time. So oh, driving yeah. into work. Sure. I, and so she texted me on Friday and said, Dad, you realize you've been using Jack Black, Jack Black for two years, don't you? <laughs> I said, yeah, I figured that out yeah. about two weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, uh, then I said, so what podcast are you on? They're playing yeah. Seattle this week. Oh, I'm back on Carolina. Yeah. And she's, I'm like, hey, that's a committed daughter, though. She's yeah, catching up on right. what you're doing. That's Lots good. of listening. Killing, they're killing live radio, right? <laughs> that's right. That's exactly Just right. listen to podcasts while uh-huh. they're driving in the car. Mm-hmm. That's what she does. That's what yeah. I do. So two weeks from now. Actually, I've started. Wow. No, right. Listening to like interviews. Self-help? Interviews. Or, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I need more wow. than a 20 minute self help. I'll let you borrow some of my tapes. <laughs> Meditation. So what, do you, what do you listen Ocean to? Ocean sounds. Anger, anger management. Like if I, miss anger an, management. if I miss an interview or something, and I don't have to waste time waiting. Well, what kind of interviews? Up. Well, like Rod Marinelli or oh, okay. so you're no, that, that Jason is, that's Garrett or, yeah. or Dak yeah. Prescott. Or... Okay. Speaking of Rod Marinelli, I went to a youth football game for the first time in forever. In fact, I don't know since I played youth football. I don't think I've ever been to a youth football game. How come? Because I have friends oh. who have kids who are playing youth How football. How youth? And this was uh, – these were – he's a third grader. Oh, so my. I took him to the game and because they uh, – they were all the parents had to. They've got four kids, and so they're running their kids to all these games, and they needed help. I said, "I'll take him to this game, whatever." So <laughs> it was in the rain. I mean, this is in South Lake. Okay, this is how a huge football is yeah. in South Lake. They got sure. the Dragon Youth Football Program. It's a pouring down rain, mm-hmm. and they're playing football yeah. out there. They got artificial turf fields, mm-hmm. you know, and so they got umbrellas out and everything. Mm-hmm. But speaking of Rod Marinelli, I get out there, and the coach. He looked exactly like Rod Marinelli. And he got the one sock pulled up. Him up <laughs> firing him up. I mean, <laughs> you're ready to play. You're ready to play today. It was minus any profanity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the parents said they love the guy. Yeah. I mean, he's just a go. great coach. But it, you, you mentioned Rod Marinelli. I said, anyway, yeah. so that was my part of my way. I loved it. It was so, it was. It could be a great reality TV show. They got cheerleaders out there, and, mm. you know, just the parents. Did you have when you don't have Friday a, night tykes. When you, yes, you think? there is yeah, something right. like that. Friday night tykes. Yeah. yeah, but it's, that that's that looks that looks awful the way that did, thing's. Did you have an gorgeous. umbrella? Yeah, I had an umbrella. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do so they anyway. do they sack the quarterback? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hope and they they, don't. my kid that I brought to the game, he was a stud. Where's number four? They finally put him in at quarterback, and he ran all over the. The opponent. Sometimes so coaching's like not very good at that level, too. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> hope, hope, hope they didn't fall on the darn quarterback. <laughs> oh, All right, let's go to Matt in Oklahoma next up on Talking Cowboys. Hey, guys. Uh, lifetime Cowboy fan here. I got a couple of points I wanted to uh, introduce there and see if you guys could talk on a little bit. First one is uh, Scott Linehan. Uh, not a lot to say about him. I haven't been a big fan of his. I haven't. He hasn't done well since Romo left the Cowboys, I don't think. You know, I think that was the biggest reason for Dak's success in that first year was because Romo was there on the sideline. Um, so I don't have much use for him. Uh, I think, you know, I, my mentality is produce or we'll get somebody else at will. 
I'm just afraid the Cowboys are going to stick with him, which brings me to the next point, which would be Dak Prescott. Um, you know, I've watched the Cowboys stick with guys that longer than they should have, seems like. And, um, you know, I'm just not seeing it from Dak Prescott. I don't think he's the guy that's going to get us to the Super Bowl. I don't think he's a franchise quarterback so far. Um, it seems like everybody kind of light foots around him uh, and, you know, doesn't really just say, well, he's just not that not that good. He's not the guy that's going to do it. He's not Aaron Rodgers, you know, or one of those guys. Can I ask a question, sir? So, so the question is, okay. I mean, do you guys think that this is going to be another one of those, you know, Quincy Carter, he, they stuck with him too long. Are we going to stick with Dak too long? Or are we going to move on? So, so Dak's success in 2016 was because he had Romo in his ear? Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, I think so. I think, you know, Romo in Linehan's ear and, and, and Dak's ear. You familiar with the term urban legend? <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, we're just, we're just trying to educate, man. That's all we're trying to do. Okay. I don't think anybody light foots around Dak Prescott. No. I think when – I think, you know, if you watch what I'm going to write today, I mean, when he makes good plays, I write about that. When he makes poor plays, I write about that. I think Mickey Spagnuolo is the same way, Rob Phillips. Bill Jones does a nightly sports – broadcasting station here in a major market, television market. I don't think anybody light foots around anybody. As far as sticking with them, you know, yeah, I think they'll stick with him. I think they'll stick with the coaching staff. At the end of the day, they're going to add all these up. And if it's good enough for the general manager, the owner, then he'll say, okay, we're going to move on. We'll be fine. This is what we do. Let's redraft this thing. Let's see what we have to do. Let's go out and get some free agents, whatever. But if it doesn't, then I think he'll make that decision. You know, and and there's no and I, and I take it a, 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 a exception to that. Yeah. I'm just trying to get the word out because I, I think that that we are critical of this football team, and I think that we, when it needs to be said, we say it. So you know, if if Dak is not good enough, and I don't know how many other quarterbacks out there, guys, or Aaron Rodgers. Or, yeah, or or Tom Brady or Drew Brees. Brees. You know, I, I would I, I would I would give my career in scouting. I ha- I was with one. I was with one like that. And that was the only one. You know, and Tony Romo was good player, but you know, I, I let's not, you know Tony Romo had nothing to do with Dak Prescott in twenty sixteen. Nothing. And that's it's my quarterback. Yeah. And I, I think that again, let's not let's not forget the let's not uh, get the story messed up here. I give Scott Linehan a lot of credit that year, that first year of designing and trying offense to figure a- something out around what Dak did best. And and the other thing was that was the best offensive line in football that year. And Dak, I think, had a lot more time. If you go back and you watch this game, there's times where he does, there's times where he doesn't. And I think some of the pressure that he faces affects the way sometimes. He, He's throwing the ball and trying to complete passes when he does have time. I think they're trying. If you go back and watch this game, they try to th- spread him out, but they were also making an effort to try to get the ball out quickly because it's not the same offensive line. Troy Aikman spoke to it yesterday on the broadcast. It's not, not the same set of receivers either out there running. It's just not. Routes. It's a It's a completely, in a lot of ways, it's a completely Tied different in. offense from two years ago. Yeah. And so trying to compare those two things, I, it's a lot of time has passed since then and a lot of faces have changed. And Zach Martin spoke to it last night. They've got to figure something out up front. They said blocking up front for the run game is one one thing. They're doing that okay. But if we can't protect our quarterback, we're not going to win a lot of games. Guys taking a lot of hits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of hits. So what do you think the answer is up front? I want to – I'm, I'm, I'm committed to allowing that left guard to grow. You know, I am committed. I'm committed to allowing the right tackle to try and develop a little bit more. Am I concerned about what's going on at left tackle? Some, yeah, I am. You know, center is a backup player. Center is really a journeyman player. He's he's done the best he can, and it's probably. And I don't see you going out there and getting somebody better because you don't have anybody. Now maybe this Redmond kid that they picked up one day will be a serviceable backup. That I mean, it shouldn't be serviceable because that's what Joe Looney is right now. Joe Looney ain't getting you killed, but Joe Looney is not. Travis Frederick, you know, we can't expect that. We can't expect him to play like that. They're going to have to figure out ways, like Rob said, maybe a little bit what we saw with Seattle. You're going to have to get the ball out of your hand a little bit quicker. I mean, I mean, but that's, it, that's going to put it on people on the outside. Yeah. That's going to put it on the outside for those guys to have to win a little bit more. So they many, don't have a tight end that can always win, too. That's another safety blanket that these guys use. We just don't have that guy. 
Seattle played with two backup offensive linemen. Three, actually. Three? Yeah, all inside. Well, Fluker. Fluker. Yeah, he's a backup. He's not he's a, a backup. star. But he, he, but he was he uh, was you're, one your of their point, starters. You're right. No, you're right. And you're he right. was a first I, round I should, draft pick at yeah, one point, yeah. too. They played with <laughs> Joey Hunt at yeah. center and Sweezy at yeah. the one guard spot. Yeah. And, and, and Sweezy started games before. But, he started, he started but, the, the, yeah. the Chicago game. Yeah, and he started for in Tampa and then in Seattle before. He was. Oh, that was a defense. scary yeah. sight when I saw Cameron Fleming at left tackle for a yeah. brief <laughs> amount of time. Yeah. I, and Dak didn't assign blame after the game. He said, look, when, when I go back and watch, I got to see, is it me sometimes? Is it the protection? And I, I thought there was one sack he took where he just needed to get rid of the ball. And he held, he held it a tick long, and he took the sack. So, again, it's, there's a lot of different things that go into this when you struggle this much and when, you're putting up 13 Z points a game. When Zach Martin gets knocked back on a play and then Prescott feels that white jersey in his lap and then he tries to duck it and go forward and now he's trying to throw the ball to – to Beasley coming across, but he can't get his feet set. You know, usually, I mean, nine times out of ten, Zach Martin's got that block, and then boom, you hear, now you got to step up and a throw. Yep. You know, this is what this team is right now. They're, 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 every play you could go, well, where's, okay, who made that mistake? Who made that mistake? Well, okay. Oh, that was Zach Martin? Oh, okay. You know, I mean, even the guy, Ezekiel, it's stepping out of bounds. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. When your best players are making mistakes, you're not going to have much success. And that's where they are right now. And this includes the OC. You know, he, he's got to do a better job too. But, you know, he, he can call plays and they don't finish the plays. You know, then there's not much. I mean, it's, it's I call it low-hanging fruit. You can blame him all you want. But, you know, there's the general manager has to look at the play calling. He has to look at the players, and that's on him too. The players I, are on him too. I just wonder if people understand the, the quarterback hit stat. Because that yeah. means he's getting hit. Oh, yeah. He's getting hit either right before he throws the ball and he eludes it, or it's right as he's throwing the ball. That's what a quarterback no hit means. Up and, yeah. So when you can't step up, it's yeah. hard to be accurate. It's hard to get the ball down the field. They don't have time to get the ball down the field. That's what right. Zach spoke to yesterday. Yeah. We've and got Zach to get, was yeah. the only one we, that came forward. He said, if we don't do a better job protecting number four, we can't have – a good offense and letting routes develop is and, what he yeah, said. Yeah, and letting routes develop. Ab See, that's that. And another thing I'm getting a little tired of is Dak Prescott standing up there taking all the shots. Yeah, and, you know, they, and quarterbacks have and quarterbacks to do, have to know, do that. He does, but, but, but he, but you know what? They ought to treat. He ought to be on the injury report every week for stab wounds that he has to deal with because he and, and hey, he's up there saying, "Hey, I've got to get better. I've got." Yeah, he knows that. He knows what he he knows what he is. We know his limitations, what he is, but we've also seen him play great. Right. But you're everybody's right here. They they better damn well figure something out. You know, you cannot go into these games. And Mickey's right. You go back and watch eight games before the Kansas, you know, up until the the Atlanta game. Maybe something psychologically has affected him the way he's playing. You know, maybe all those hits are now starting to add up a little bit more. Maybe he's not trusting what he's seeing. You know, guys are open, but he's not going to make that throw because all of a sudden he throws a ball. You know, how many interceptions this guy had now where he throws a ball and it clangs off somebody's hands and ends up in somebody else's hands? And, and Mickey's talked about it. This is How could that psychologically help anybody? It's an entirely new group almost that he's dealing with. He's got a couple receivers from last year and, and a tight end who got minimal snaps. And it's other than that, it's an entirely different group. And they're trying to grow, like you said. But this is but the group they selected. You're right about this that. This is they said. You know what? Right about that. We don't need decision. to have a number one receiver. We don't need to have a big time tight end. If you want to point the finger, you can point. You can circle everybody involved here. You know that, that everybody needs to wake up in the morning when they're driving to work. If they're listening to me bitching about how they're playing, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe that's right. Maybe that maybe you need to be a little bit better with your player selection. Maybe you need to be better with your coaching. Maybe you need to be better with your offensive uh, uh, play calling. Maybe you need to be better with, at playing a quarterback or blocking at right guard or not getting caught in looking inside of the safety. Maybe you need to be a little bit better doing that. That's why we're sitting here having bitch fest right now because of, of things that are going on. They're just not good enough, and it it's everybody's hand in this one. 
Well, we've got all week to talk about this. We do. Yeah. We do. I, I do want to mention this uh, because there's breaking news this morning. A former Dallas Cowboy, a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, passed away this morning. Tommy McDonald. Tommy McDonald was with the Cowboys in 1964, member mm. of the College Football Hall of Fame as well. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. In fact, in Oklahoma, at Oklahoma, he was part of that 47-game win streak. He did not lose a game in college yep. playing for Bud Wilkinson at Oklahoma. He, he was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles, played with the Eagles for six years. In their years. Hall of Fame, too, I believe. That's right. Yeah. Probably, yeah. I'm, yeah. Sure, yeah. I'm sure he is. And uh, came to the Cowboys in 1964 – Played one year with the Cowboys and then was traded for Danny Villanueva, place kicker, after Bob Hayes became a Cowboy in 1965. So Bob Hayes basically replaced a pro football hall. Of, one pro football Hall of Famer replaced another one. That's rare in uh, this day and age. Yeah, huh? exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and uh, the other Steve thing Young, about maybe? Tommy McDonald is he was the last non-kicker not to wear a face mask. I remember that as well. Yeah. Yep. So Rogers is another one passed Favre. away at age yeah, 84 this morning. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, rest our in condolences peace. Yeah. to the McDonald family. Quite a character too. Yeah. Uh, and I, that may have been one reason why he was only here for a year. I'm not, I'm not sure if the Tommy McDonald character meshed real well with coach Landry. Those guys, <laughs> those guys in the sixties had a lot you know of fun. What? I don't know. They had a lot of characters on this. Yeah, team. That's true. That's in the sixties and the seventies, yep. by the way, I don't yep. know how Tom put up with it. Tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why he lost all his hair. Yep. That's right. Yep. I mean, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> that is tough. You surprised that uh, last night before I know we got a couple minutes. You surprised that New England went in there and took an L at sure. Detroit. Sure, it's was not. our desperate team theory again kind of working there? Yeah, yeah. I think how about so. the Giants going down? I mean, I know the Houston's two yeah, there, yeah, yeah, it was two. One two. of them had to win. How about yeah. Buffalo? Buffalo. I mean, there you, you go. Know, you can't figure this league out. No, you really can't. As we say it's a strange lady. It right? is. It is Brian. Yeah. T-shirt. Put it on a T-shirt. How many winless teams won? Five, five winless there was eight, teams. There won. was eight winless teams have played so far, including o one and one Cleveland. Right, and o one and one Pittsburgh has a chance and to win the Pittsburgh yeah. To, yeah. tonight. Six. Yeah, so five, five of Tampa the eight Bay, that won. Juggernaut. And one of them had to lose because they played each other. So only two other ones, you know, lost. I think it was Arizona and the Raiders. They so you contend it's a good thing for the Cowboys yes, that, that the Detroit Lions won. got off the schneid and got They're that off. first win. They got their win last night. Better uh, figure out a way to get some points, though. Yeah, because uh, you know you don't really want Matt Stafford getting in a rhythm offensively. You know? Not here. Mm -hmm. Not when he's from here. Because then you <laughs> got because then you got to come back and match that mixture. Yeah. Yep. Figure but, that out fast. Got, yeah. We got well, it. they lost two in a row. <laughs> All right, that does it for Talking Cowboys. We will talk at you again tomorrow. The break is next. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!